uh, a left-handed spiral actually has 386 degrees rotation. A right-handed spiral, the regular 360. So, leaded waves have a different turn of these sorts of phase shifting waves of the rotation going down the transcendence than a right-handed would. For a right-handed spiral, it would be first three seconds you see side, right, right, then traveling left, and then the fifth second is eight. Then for five, you're seeing it beginning of the second, travel left, and so on. And that's for the seven seconds. For a right-handed outsole, it would be the backwards. It would be one, twelve, five, one, one, three. And for a left, it would be four, one, one, two, seven, two. And backwards for a left in. Um, what you want to do is you want to read with the right in and the right out way most. These are the most evolves, and this is where the most energy is on the macro level. And these are the ways we lean the most energy. The left-handed outway, I'm sorry, the right outways and the left-handed waves, they have a new, but they don't get thick and manifest act till they get to the uh, nuclear level. They're responsible for, for like the weak force, uh, the strong force, uh, magnetism, stuff like that. Well, magnetism is a, a left wave, but um, each wave can different forces. is responsible for delivering different forces in reverse. But since we want to try to get with the life is right in and the left-handed out is against gravity. By going these two directions, we're able to have the most energy. So primarily you're dealing with right in out. You can deal with the other two, we'll get a little energy out of it. That's why on these two ways the most. And uh, it's a tricky thing to try to do these accelerative paths, but uh, to be incorporated into the barrel. So I mean, into, um, the rate, and really this is a complicated barrel as these uh, things are. So as I make them, I'll go ahead and start making them in a minute. Uh, you'll see how I incorporate twists into them and uh, wind up delivering its effect. This is something else uh, to do with, uh, as we'll go over this, good time. It has to do with the fact that um, there is no dark matter. Dark matter is just the interference of, of crossing paths. Dark. As paths, they interfere with each other gravitationally. They change direction in a slight gravity. Level. So it looks like there's matter, but it's actually just photo interference. And uh, there's no dark energy there. Uh, it's like there's dark energy. It's just because we're all away from it all the time. As time goes on, each at the center of the universe is the interesting. Because the universe is imploding, but it's imploding your place faster than it's imploding anywhere else. You get that. Everywhere else, relative to you, is a little further in time. And place other than you is not in quite as quick as you are. So everybody's in quicker than everybody else. And therefore, everybody's imploding away from everybody else. And it's like the universe is ending, but we're all shrinking. And it looks dark energy pushing apart faster and faster, but it's not true. It's shrinking away from it faster and faster. So it's kind of a paradox time is that we are need all of us at the center of the universe. And uh, each of us, it, it would be to say each of us is the center of the universe because the rest of the universe relative to us is not getting as quick as we are. So it looks like the universe is expanding, but indeed it is, it is shrinking. And that's what brings atoms into the is this ether spins faster and faster, waves co-mingle, vortexes are in, pretty soon you have an electron, which is just a uh, standing wave vortex, and uh, stars are born. This the whole theory of the universe is the explanation behind the, of, uh, the constant of matter. And atoms are created and coming into existence all the time, and they're turning into stars, and the stars turn into elements, and we are. So, but there is some drives, all the forces there. They're not just forces that come out of where. It's a solution that drives gravitism and everything else. And um, this A, again, um, Lagrange wall between the universe and the Andromeda universe. We're shrinking on this wall, it's on that side of the wall. And it, we're both getting further because gravity is getting us and he is falling into that galaxy condition. So that uh, is a lot. Let's see. I guess I should probably skip this. This is just saying everything has three rotation in it. And that the ether field is responsible for it. And uh, basically this, this is the beginning of saying that depending how something's rotating on the x, y axis, it's rotating clockwise on the z axis, counterclockwise on the x axis, and counterclockwise on the y axis, that those three different directions, or the combination of three directions, determine how fast that was moving through time. Because a right hand rotation is four time, a left rotation is slow time. So something that's staying right on all three axes, moving is aging than something that's staying left on all three axes. That's going through time less quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and then I come back after and I can show how to act physically construct. 
Um, this thing that, uh, again, something that's spinning on all three in different ways is moving away from us in the fourth dimension. It's not moving, it's just being accelerated by the air, or it's spinning on three axis faster than it's shrinking from us into its own pretty well. It would take longer for a beam to teach. Take longer, if this is spinning right, 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 Y, Z, it starts shrinking and moving from us. It would take longer for this light beam to this particle over here because it's moving time faster than that. And it's shrinking away from us quicker than something that would be rotating on the Z, left, left, left. Uh, that would remain close to her or actually become closer to and the light beam would take as long to get there. So you could say that it is getting further from us, yet as far as the coordinates relative to the edges of this room, the particle is staying in place. It's shrinking away from us into its own gravitational field. That would really be the fourth thing is the spin conglomerate particle determines its position in the fortune. How quick is it aging? Quickly is it uh, depressed and shrunk away from us? And I don't think that's something that's um, take seriously right. Uh, particles have different spin. You know, electrons have a different spin positron. But one is moving through time at a different rate than there is. And uh, I don't think this is conventional wisdom. Um, this also has with the coil. The most bent, different ratio of phi, let's say pi beams. Uh, pi is, a, there are nonsense in nature. There are things that are close constant. There are things pretty much the same, how uh, you look at it. But there are no constants. Everything flux. The Buddhists are all is change. And this is to say, Pi is really an effect of the rotational field that the circle is in. If the circle is in space, you have something that resembles very close to conventional pi. But as the circle is bent due to gravity, this is bent um, the disk squared, because you're bending two axes, the x and y axis, whereas the radius is only bent on this axis. So the ratio of pi changes in a gravitational field. Where the field, the, what would it be? The greater the pi will be. Pi will be 3 pi on Jupiter, and it'll only be 3 pi on Earth. And um, this also refers to the Wald theorem that shows plus b is greater than c when a sphere. You no, know, there is no such thing. Like I say, there are no sense. There's no such thing as a particularly flat plane. So the theorem that it equals b squared is only true theoretically flat plane. When it's mapped on a surface or under, it's always greater than c. And uh, that has to be taken into consideration when making these, these coils. Um... This is saying, was uh, explained, there are no constants in nature. If you look at zero, especially the zero, in a, um, in a vision, it doesn't stand for at nothing. It just stands back that we've looked at quantity of the real, like mass, energy, or a potato soup or something like that, and we can't see any of it. So it's one gram, and well, it's, it's pretty much just one gram and more than that. But we'll call it zero. The truth is, the closer and closer, there's always going to be a little bit down there you cannot observe that has counted for in the long run. So if you make a thousand observations, you constantly say, oh, that's zero. The little bit that isn't seen, that isn't zero, is going to add up and it come bite you in the rear on. So what it says is if you have to average the average unseen, it comes to 0. 0.000147. I think I'm getting the, uh, the hook here. So... Ladies and gentlemen, we're, then we'll come back with on demonstration. And the yeah, I'd like to show everybody else this time. So cover the theoretical uh, as well as like back, uh, we can have a hand make these for yourself.